Hello, and welcome back to The Recovering Collector here on New Toy Robot. I am Michael Jason Francis, and you're probably wondering, James Dean, you just did like three shows of Transformers. <laughs> you were literally last week transforming Transformers, and now you're going to James Dean? Yeah, <laughs> yes I am. Uh, so September 30th, 1955, James Dean died. He died in a car accident. Um, he basically drove a car with an aluminum body as fast as the speed of light uh, on his way to Salinas, Northern California, and hit another car um, and died. So at the time, let me, let me show you here real quick. Um, at the time, East of Eden was the only film that came out. So East, this is it. East of Eden was the only film of his that came out at the time. Rebel Without a Cause, the one that made everyone nuts for James Dean, didn't come out till October of 55. So he was dead by the time this came out. And after that was Giant. And once again, gone. So James Dean left a huge void for these fans because here they are embracing um, Rebel Without a Cause, teenagers are going nuts over this, and there's no actor, there's nobody to connect with anymore because he's no longer with us. So, this fan magazine, um, I, I, you know, I'm not even going to call it a fan magazine, it's called the James Dean Album, um, came out a year, this is a year after uh, James Dean passed away. So this is from 1956. That's why I said, Everyone, you know, if you're probably wondering, you're like, well, wait a minute, why is it you're going to talk about the year 1956 and not 1955 when James Dean died? Because the magazine was published in um, 56. So that's why. <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so real quick, I'm just going to go through a couple facts about 1955. I always like kind of throwing this in here because um, just to kind of show you what was going on during that year uh, when this magazine was published. So the cost of living, here, I'm just going to run through some of the cost of living things. To buy a new house in 1956, it was a little over $11,000. Uh, hi, Dahlia, Dahlia Loves here. East of Eden is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, I love, I love East of Eden. East of Eden's a great film. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check it out. Um, it's really interesting because for the time when it came out, you didn't have this emotionally raw, like, emotion to come out of an actor like that like it was like when, when james dean was on a scene it was just watching like a fire and watching that fire spread and wondering if you'd be able to control it that was like that was james dean when he was acting um so anyways east of eden um what yes it was great um going back to 1956 hatter don't depress me with housing prices stick to the dead people <laughs> hi hatter no no wait it gets better the average monthly rent for 1956 was $88. $88 and you could rent a place. Um, a gallon of gas was $0.22. Cents. The average cost of a new car, like $2,000 for a brand new car in 1956. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. The average yearly wage, though. This is so basically, it was you made like $4,000 a year. So, not Dean's car, that's for sure. <laughs> no, certainly not. Um, definitely not Dean's car uh, that, for that car. Um, but you basically made $4,000 a year in 1956. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you got to, yeah, yeah, this is ridiculous how cheap everything was, but you didn't make much. Um, a couple of things that happened in 1956, um, it was based, this was really interesting. Um, this was the first year that, Elvis Presley actually had a number one hit and it was Heartbreak Hotel. So I think Edward, he, he showed up on the Ed Sullivan show. Um, and yeah, his number one hit for in 1956, his first number one hit was Heartbreak Hotel. Um, the, here we go. Though the, the top, the huge movie at the time for 1956 was the 10 commandments. Um, 
part the waters. <laughs> um, Moses dated uh, Natalie Wood. Is that what you're saying, Dahlia Love? No. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Nat Dahlia, Dahlia Love showed up and said that he dated Natalie Wood for a little bit. I feel like everybody dated Natalie Wood for a little bit. Does that mean? I'm not trying to be mean, but studios always set up, you know, actresses with, you know, oh, Elvis. <laughs> dated Elvis. Gotcha. I always felt like studios like always tried to pair people together. Um, let's see. The first computer hard drive. This is 1956. The IBM releases the first computer with a hard drive. The IBM 305 uh, RAMAC during September. So the same year that James Dean died, the first uh, computer hard drive came out. Um, her and Tab Hunter, and that went well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the first computer hard drive. Um, let's see. Um, I think there was also As the World Turns. I don't watch soap operas, but I, everyone knows this show. As the World Turns, the first half hour serial As the World, world Turns begins on CBS in 1956. Um, we also have My Fair Lady as playing. Oh, here, this is cool. It's interesting considering James Dean died on a highway in a car. But in 1956, the United States Federal Aid Highway Act. So basically, Eisenhower signs the Federal Aid Highway Act into law during June. This authorized the creation of an interstate system. So all those fun freeways and all that exciting stuff, over 41,000 miles of highways across the United States. Sorry. Not highway, not not freeways, but highways. Um, that is just the government at the point in history and was estimated to cost between oh my gosh, the 30 25 to 30 billion to build. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, that's that's crazy. Oh, and also Grace Kelly leaves Hollywood and marries her prince. So 1956, Grace Kelly leaves Hollywood. Um, a couple of the other things I wanted to talk about were, uh, where was it? Where's there's movies? Um, here we go. Oh, here we go. Um, oh, wow. Elvis Presley's first movie, Love Me Tender, opens in New York. So that Elvis, it was a big year for Elvis. Um, I'm watching my cat climb all over <laughs> behind the camera here. <laughs> if it starts wiggling or knocking around, that's my cat, Amy. Uh, the popular films were Guys and Dolls, The King and I, Trapeze, High Society, and Around the World in 80... That's my cat. <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> my cat's butt, everybody. Um, <laughs> uh, the popular musicians were... Uh, <laughs> the first sorry. Uh, wow, 24 inches. Hatter just came in with this. It was five megabytes and was 24 inches in diameter. That's insane. Um, for the first time, I've got a flash drive that's like this big and it holds two terabytes worth of information. Um, the popular musicians were Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, Jerry Lee Lewis, Johnny Cash, Ella Fitzgerald, and Dean Martin. Um, uh, Marlon Brando was. Another crazy method actor like Dean. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you don't know too much about James Dean, if you're part of the younger crowds and didn't really watch much James Dean, he was a method method actor. Uh, method acting was a thing uh, Lee Strasberg kind of put together, which was basically you were that character. If you like, like if you were bleeding, you made yourself bleed. <laughs> like that was method acting. You know. Uh, who are all the people that dated Natalie Wood? Oh, God. Oh, Dahlia uh, Love put like Christian Bale. Christian Bale is that is exactly like that. He, um, If you ever saw The Mach Machinist with Christian Bale, he lost all that weight to basically be starving himself. I think he ate like an apple a day or an apple slice a day. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, method acting. Um, yeah, the first heart. Uh, we had the black and white portable TV set hit the market in 1956. Um, answered like the Jeopardy question. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. The first commercial videotape recorder, a VR 1000 from Apex Corporation, goes on sale. So a lot of crazy stuff that was happening. Um, oh, and Sony exports its first products to Canada. A transistor, a transistor, <laughs> transistor radio. Oh my God. All I will say, Hatter, is when she turned 21, she was seeing Frank Sinatra. So that's gross. You know, that's just gross. And you know, and that still happens too. There's always the older actors with the younger. I'm not gonna forget it. <laughs> I'm not just gonna bring up Woody Allen. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about Woody Allen. Um, so that's our little trip down 
1956. Um, I should have had gloves to open this thing. Um, so, you know, let me hold on. Let me hold off first. So this is uh, a slot car of James Dean's uh, Porsche 550 Spider. So this is a car he was driving. I'm going to take it off the stand here. He was driving with his mechanic. They were going to head, they were headed to Salinas for a race. Okay, let's switch this over. He was driving to Salinas um, for a race. He just, he just got this car. This is, you know, he just got this car. And um, they basically were trying to, you know, with a new engine in a car, uh, you want to put some miles on it before you really start to tear into it. Um, of course, James Dean tore into it anyways, but they were basically making the drive up to Northern California, uh, leaving from the car was um, being touched up, uh, uh, finished getting ready for the race. It was where he picked up his car and they took off to Salinas. And basically, in, this is an aluminum body. Like the body of this car was made out of aluminum to be light. Um, and basically, he was driving down the ho driving down the highway, <laughs> uh, and ba and his his mechanic was with him sitting here, and he was speeding down the highway, and they he notices a car, one of the a car from the 1950s. It wasn't aluminum body; those things were like tanks, and it was about to turn in front of him. And the last thing James Dean said was, "Don't worry, he'll see us," and he smacked right into him. The only reason his driver survived is because he was thrown from the car. Um, James Dean was not. Um, I think he snapped his neck back and Turnip Seed. Yes, Dahlia Love with the name. Yeah, Turnip Seed uh, was his name. And could you imagine being the guy that was part of James Dean's death? It wasn't the guy's fault. The guy was making a legal, was doing a legal turn. James Dean was just driving too fast. Um, but could you imagine being that guy? Uh, anyways, so this is a slot car that I picked up. It, it was by uh, Rev Revell, which is pretty much most of my models and everything else, if you've had any models before. I don't race slot cars. I have no interest in racing slot cars. But I love this Porsche, and I'm a huge fan of James Dean, so I got it. It's got his, his racing number, 130. It even has on the back, let's see if I can get it to focus. If you can see that, it says Little Bastard. Now, George Barris... Um, George Barris, who created the Batmobile, uh, wrote that little bastard on there, uh, for James Dean. Uh, what is this? So don't wear seatbelts. Well, no, you need to wear seatbelts. What are you saying? Hatter, what are you saying? So don't wear seatbelts. Um, no, the car, it was an aluminum. Look at this tiny little thing. It was, a, well, no, not this size, but it was a small little aluminum race car. That's why. Wear seatbelts. Um, but if you're in an aluminum car, it's better be thrown from it. Uh, yeah, George Barris is the one that wrote Little Bastard. Supposedly, uh, this, I, I don't have any real evidence behind this, but he wrote Little Bastard because he found out his father wasn't really his father, um, I think is what it was. Um, his mom died when he was very young. Um, you can go check out all the different books and stuff like that about James Dean. Uh, I recommend James Dean, The Mutant King. That's a really good book. Um, his mom died when he was very young and, and he found out that his dad wasn't really his father. I think that's what it was. And that's why a uh, little bastard was written uh, onto the back of his car. So there's that. So there's that slot car. Um, so here's the magazine. I, I know I called it a fan magazine. It pretty much is. I wish I, I should be wearing gloves while I'm open, going through this thing. This is from 1956. Um, it's really what's really neat about this is there's a lot of photos that aren't actually published that were just published in here. Um, it's, it's I'm gonna be very careful opening this thing up. Uh, we have James Dean photos. Like you can actually, it's like I said, it's like a fan magazine. You can buy eight big portraits for a dollar fifty. Or all 25 big portraits for 450. So they have an ad here about buying these things. So this, I'm just gonna read a little bit of this. We salute James Dean. On that tragic day of September 30th, 1955, the day that marked the death of James Dean in a grinding auto crash, Hollywood knew it had lost one of its freshest and greatest talents. But as we were to keep learning in the months that followed, Hollywood's loss was almost overshadowed by that of James Dean's devoted and heartbroken fans. So this was 
the first real magazine that had about his death and the, all these photos and different things about his life. Um, there's even a Jimmy Dean fact sheet. Um, I love how they call him Jimmy Dean on a lot of these things. Uh, so this was like the first, this was like, this was kind of like, here you go, fans. Sorry, you don't have the real person, but here's this magazine. Um, it says here, there are so many thousands of letters have poured into this office, meaning the magazine's office. We have received so many requests for information, uh, a last photograph, a bit of clothing, that it seemed only natural for us to want to express our bereavement to perhaps create a monument in his memory. Uh, this album, then, is our small but heartfelt tribute to James Dean. Um, uh, it, it was published by Ideal Publish Company. It's funny, copyright under the Universal Copyright Convention. So it, this came out in New York, um, like I said, 1956. So I, I'm not sure what they did before this. Um, but so they have articles like here, like the boy who, refused, you know what, let me get my, let me get my mug out of here so you can see the whole magazine. Um, so they have here the boy who refused to die. Um, it's, you know, so you're getting all the little bits of information. Uh, they have a photo here of James Zine, um, where he would, he would take pictures on set a lot of times. Uh, he was really big into photography. I imagine, I, I really believe that if James Dean kept going, I believe he would have been a director at some point. Um, cause it was funny between him and Marlon Brando. I mean, I, I know Brando, Brando hated James Dean or couldn't stand him. There's actually a photo of him. It's James Dean, Marlon Brando. They're like standing together and like Brando's giving <laughs> the camera the finger. And I know it just, that's his intention. That was more towards James Dean. Um, it says over here, Jimmy was a combination of many things, a skyrocket, an idealist, a cynic and a dreamer, a thunderbolt and an uninhibited un extrovert and a little lost boy. Um, so it's really interesting. Uh, there's a little bio here, uh, the tragic life of James Dean. Have him, little, his middle name was Byron. Picture of him at four months. There's a picture with his aunt. I never really saw a picture of him with his mom because I'm trying to remember how old it was, how old he was when his mom died. Um, he was sent to live with his aunt and uncle who did their very best. Oh, okay. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, his mother, Mildred Wilson, was a farmer's daughter. As an only child, Jimmy had all the love he needed and happiness. Um, then his mom died when he was nine. So he was nine years old when his mom died. Um, and then, then he was sent to live with his aunt and uncle. So he didn't really spend much time around. Oh, so that makes total sense. So he didn't spend much time with his mom and dad. I mean, with his dad after his mom died, because his dad was like, well, it's not my kid anyway. So I just realized that's kind of messed up. That makes sense about the whole little bastard thing being written on the back of his car. Um, he did a lot of stuff in Broadway. Um, I've always saw pictures of it. Oh, wait, hold on. So they have all these different pictures of him when he was younger. I'm curious where he, they ended up getting all these, these photos from, um, like what family member gave him up. Cause I've seen some of these photos, um, just in other books and so forth, but there's a lot of them here that I just never saw. Um, his, with high school, look, he's playing Frankenstein. Um, geez Louise and all his different plays. He made his, made his Broadway debut in the Jaguar. By Arthur Kennedy and Constance Ford in 1952. I think, it, and there's a picture of him. I always, oh, the Immortalist. That's I, another one of his that kind of got him a lot. I think that's what got him into, got him uh, with East of Eden. Um, I think Ilya, Ilya Kazan saw him in the Immortalist, and that's what kind of cast him for uh, East of Eden. Um, but there's him with Elizabeth Taylor. I mean, it's crazy. He basically had like three long, like it was like three years of fame really um before it was just gone they were just like um he was in an acting school um he was in an acting school with martin landau yeah oh yeah that's right yes exactly um there was also somebody i want to say who was it i i thought there was there was someone else that was in school with him that kind of cracked me up in new york uh that he was in school with was it mrs Ockmonic? from Alf. I can't remember. I'll have to look back up into that. Um, but it, he just really had like three years of fame. You know, maybe that was too much for him or whatever like that, but he really just had a certain amount of time where he just blew up. 
And I don't, you know, he, I don't know. He always looked to me like James Dean was kind of, he didn't seem like the nicest guy. Um, he was kind of the last person I would ever want to like try and have a conversation with. Um, but, oh, here's him uh, working on some stunt scenes from a Rebel Without a Cause at Griffith Park Observatory. Um, here's for the fans. This is talking about his love. Does anybody know who Vampira was? Uh, Vampira was like the Elvira of the 1950s, I think is the best way to put it. Um, a good deal older than Jim, Vampira first attracted him with her eccentric charms. Well known on the West Coast for her weird TV program and ghoulish costumes. She frequented uh, Googie's Restaurant, Jimmy's favorite spot. And I could see why James Dean would be attracted to her as like a friend or just wanting to hang out with her because he wanted to be different than everybody else. He tried to have himself as much as he wanted to be away from people. He did try and connect with people that he felt were artistic or at least interesting. Uh, he confided in Ursula Andress. Um, I don't remember what movies she's run, but with Natalie Wood, he had fun. Oh, and then there's Pierre Angeline. That was, there's, there's a love story for you. Pierre Angeline, uh, basically his, her mom wanted him to have like, no, oh, or thank you, James Bond. Thank you, Dahlia Love. Um, basically, Ursula, uh, not, uh, Pierre Angeline's mom wanted James Dean to have nothing to do with her. She was already starting to be like a star in her own rights at that time. And the mom thought that James Dean, like I said, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't big at the time, but James Dean would be like poison to her career. And so she ended up marrying somebody else. And James Dean, I wonder if, did they have a photo? They probably don't have a photo of it. James Dean, uh, during the wedding, was apparently on his motorcycle, revving his engine during the time when that was happening, when she was marrying Vic Damone. Thank you, Dahlia Love. Yeah, it was when he was marrying, marrying uh, Vic Damone. So, and I've seen a photo. I saw a photo of the actual ceremony. And across the street, you can make out there is a guy on a motorcycle. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's him. So, you know, that story is real. Oh, so they're going to go into East of Eden, uh, Rebel Without a Cause, and James Dean's greatest performance. Now, they always say that James Dean's greatest performance is Giant. I don't... <laughs> I like Giant. I like Giant a lot. But I feel like it's not his best work. Um, I feel like he's not even in it that much. So... It was he he was there, but I feel like it was more Elizabeth Taylor and Rock Hudson's movie than actually his. Um, I, I like James Dean a lot. I really feel like, oh, here's his big final scene when he was playing drunk. Uh, they actually shaved his widow's peak back to make it look like he was losing his hair because he was supposed to be older. Um, I like James Dean a lot. I feel like even like with Heath Ledger and stuff like that, when and I think I've talked about this before, their death made them more celebrity than their life i like his stuff you know when i was a teenager i thought james dean was the greatest thing in the world but i really feel like it was more his death was what brought his celebrity out more i mean yeah i think we'd still kind of be talking to him but i really do feel he would have ended up just being a director um i don't think he would have had the staying power of like marlon brando uh, i'm sure i just upset a bunch of people by saying that but <laughs> His true greatness from the producer of Giant. Um, oh, and here's the car crash. So September 30th, 1955. In this car, Jimmy Dean died. That's what it says. That's that's the that's the magazine's quote. That's not mine. So, so you know, let me talk about this car. So after this happened, um, Elizabeth Sheraton uh, was his friend too. She was the mom in Seinfeld. That's who I'm thinking about. Thank you, Elizabeth Sheridan. Thank you, Dahlia Love. Um, so, <laughs> Mrs. Ar Achmonic from ALF. What was I? <laughs> that was way off. Um, so, James Dean's car. So, after it did this wreck, they basically, what happened was, is um, Marty could have warned him. <laughs> Marty could have warned him. <sighs> Hatter, was that like a Back to the Future joke? <laughs> Hatter, Hatter. Marty was already trying to save Doc Brown, okay? You can't expect him to save Doc Brown and then travel all the way over to Los Angeles to try and save the James Dean. The damn car wouldn't even start most of the time. Um, back to the, now back to this car. Um, 
He was too busy saving his mother and father's relationship. Marty was super busy. Um, and also trying not to sleep with his mom. So he had, he had, he had, quite, he had quite a lot on his table. Um, now, back to this car. After this accident, the car was sent on, you, sorry, Dialo. The car was sent on tour to promote safe driving for teens. So this car was displayed across the United States to promote safe driving. Um, while it, that was happening, people would take pieces of, off of it um, until eventually the car just disappeared. The car just vanished. Um, I think one of the axles was found recently that was connected to this car. Um, I don't know who had it, but this was like a couple of years ago, an axle of it was found, but the car's gone. Somebody eventually just took it. Um, I don't know. Uh, he did a promotion. Oh, wait. He did a promotion for safe driving a week. Or yes, he did. Dahlia Love brought in that he did a promotion for sa uh, safe driving a week or two before he died. The last thing he said on that thing, he was in his alpha too from Giant. So this was in between shooting. He turns around. He's like, yeah, kids, you better slow down because the life you save may be my own. <laughs> so how fortuitous is that? Um, but yeah, so the car just vanished. I don't know if it was stolen or if it was eventually just put away somewhere in storage and forgotten, but the car's gone. Nobody has any idea where that car went. So that's just odd. Could you imagine if you have that? One thing, if you have it, there's no way you can sell it because clearly you stole it or you bought it from somebody who stole it. So you'll never be able to show it to people. You'll never be able to show it to people or you'll never ever be able to, um, to sell it, to sell the darn thing. Um, those who loved him. Uh, these are some people who I have no idea. Oh, well, Nick Adams, uh, Steve Rowland, Dick Clayton, James Whitmore, Perry Lopez. Um, these are the people who apparently loved, knew and loved him. Uh, what James Dean's death did to Hollywood. Um, who are the friends who still mourn? There's Tab Hunter, uh, Bill Campbell, Steve Rowland, uh, Sal, Mi oh, Sal Minio, another Hollywood tragedy. Uh, I won't get into too much about what happened with him, but uh, Sal Minio was in uh, Giant and uh, also when he had more of a part in Rebel Without a Cause than Giant. Um, Dennis Hopper, Dennis Hopper was in Rebel Without a Cause and he actually showed up. He's also in Giant. I think, is this a picture of, um, hold on. Yep, yeah, this is Dennis Hopper. This is Dennis Hopper at 19. Uh, I think he must have been 17 or 16. Um, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, he was in Giant too. Um, there's Dennis Hopper. Uh, this is just crazy. Um, it's so cool to see a magazine like this. Oh, where Jimmy found peace. So there's his headstone, which was stolen, I think. At one point, uh, somebody came and stole his headstone, um, which is just all kinds of weird. Uh, Chaplin also. Chaplin, when Chaplin died, somebody stole his body and they tried to ransom it out. Uh, people get really weird when someone famous dies. Uh, here's a picture of James Dean next to uh, a tombstone that says life. So there you go. Coming to the end here. Uh, the deepening mystery of James Dean. What are the hidden answers? What in the world? Um, are these like questions? The deepening mystery of James Dean. Question. Are they going to build a memorial to Jimmy? A bronze life max. Oh, here we go. Is is in the Lawrence Hutton Hall of Fame at Princeton. I wonder if that's the a bronze life mask. No, that wouldn't be the same thing. I'm wondering if that's the same thing that's at Griffith Park. Um, did Jimmy meet Natalie Wood on Rebel Without a Cause set? Was he his girl? Was she his girlfriend? In 1954, Jimmy and Nat did a TV show for GE Playhouse. From that time, she was his number one fan. But it wasn't until Rebel that they dated. And then they, the bond between them was acting. So, yeah. <laughs> Dye says, nope. Oh, here it is. So here's, let me see if I can get this. Uh, what did Mar so here we go. There's the photo I was telling you about. What did Marlon Brando really think of Jimmy? Was he jealous of him? Did he hate him? The simplest way to answer is to say that Jimmy's grandparents prize and letter from Brando telling how honored he was to have known such a fine boy and tremendous talent. Okay, so hold up. That's clearly after James Dean died and Brando was trying to be nice because his competition was gone. So he didn't have to worry about it. Yeah, he hated him. Yeah, he hated him. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> hated him. Um, so afterwards, you know, once his competition was over, and because you know, uh, what was it, the Wild Ones? I think the Wild Ones came out before James Dean was famous. Um, so I think Brando was the first real rebel, I guess, if you want to say it like that. Um, how come Jimmy didn't win an Academy Award or special mention? Once an actor is nominated, as Jimmy was, it isn't possible to give him a special award. It's thought that he may get one in 1957. I don't remember if he ever did. This magazine's from 56, so I'm not sure. I don't remember if he ever got an Academy Award. Um, Chadwick Boseman, he did get a Golden Globe. Um, so I know they do it now. Uh, um, I know they did it now. They do it now, but I don't know if he got any type of um, Academy Award or any type of thing for in 57. So take a look on the internet for that. Uh, why did Jimmy carry a notebook and pencil around with him? I didn't know he did that, but apparently someone noticed. Jimmy, who said he wanted to be a director someday. <laughs> See, I told you he wanted to be a director. Uh, observed methods of Nick Ray and the others. Nick Ray was the director for... Um, Nicholas Ray was for uh, Rebel Without a Cause. Uh, and others then scribbled them down. So he got little notes and stuff from that. Uh, is there any truth at all to the rumor going around that Jimmy wasn't really at the wheel when the two cars collided? Uh, Tom Fredericks, a beekeeper at Shannon Don, and his brother-in-law, Tim Dooley, testified that the mechanic, uh, Rolf, was at the wheel. What? They said that Rolf was wearing a red t-shirt and Dean was wearing white upper garments. The man they saw at the wheel just before the tragedy was wearing red. They said, however, Rolf categorically denied this report. Well, I never heard this before, that the mechanic was the one driving at the time. I can't imagine that Dean would let him take over the wheel like that. Um, driving to Salinas, it is a long drive. Um, but Dean was trying to get used to that car. Uh, didn't the mechanic die in another car wreck? <gasps> Creepy, did he? I don't think so. I don't know. I know that Rolf got, the, the mechanic, got like broken, both of his legs broken or something like that. Something crazy. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, but I don't, I don't know. Oh God, maybe he did. That's, could you imagine surviving one car crash? Just one horrible car, car crash just to die in another one? That's just messed up. Um, and then, the end and the beginning. I, I know there's a, hold on, I want to get to, okay, wait, hold on, hold on here. So The Life Mask of James Dean by Ken Kendall is uh, Lawrence Hutton Hall of Fame at Princeton. Replicas went to Fairmack High and Jimmy's dad. So this looks like I, one of them eventually must have gotten to the, um, the Griffith Park Observatory. I'm pretty sure that's the same. That's the same. Oh, you know, I just realized I'm not even showing you guys. I'm pretty sure that's the same one um, that ended up going to the Griffith, to Griffith Park Observatory. Um, what else is there? The boy who was... Oh, gosh, there's all these other crazy questions. Hold on. Didn't Jimmy have safety devices in his car? I thought all racing cars did to protect drivers from being hurt in accidents. Uh, yes, but at the, the time of the accident, neither he nor his passenger had the safety belts fastened. Oh, there you go, Hatter. They both didn't wear their seatbelts. Safety experts pointing out that Jimmy was crushed in the car, suggesting he might still be living had he taken the precaution of fastening the seatbelt. Well, if he was if he was in the car and he was crushed in the car, being in the seatbelt, I, I imagine it would have been the same thing that happened. And I, from what I heard, he when he hit, it was more of a neck-snapping thing because there was no headrest. So there's a little bit of... Sorry if that was too morbid. Um, what was the exact time of the day of his death? Highway 41. Oh, wow. They even had the address 466 in Bakersfield at 5:59 PM on September 30th. Was he killed instantly? What? It said, no, he seemed alive when taken from the wreckage, but died en route to the hospital in Paulus, Paulus Robos. Uh, Rolf was intoxicated and died when he lost control of his car in Germany. <gasps> the mechanic ended up dying. Wow. In 1981. Oh, he was old that time. Well, that's crazy. What a way to go. Um, so this is interesting. I heard he was killed instantly, but this is saying it wasn't. That's what makes it so interesting when you're reading like a source that's close to the actual time of the actor. Who was the last person to see Jimmy alive? 
Uh, okay, whatever. Is it true that Jimmy was going 120? No, he was going 65 in a 45 mile an hour zone. So that was it. Dahlia Love, I thought Jimmy stayed. That's what I, yeah, exactly. He didn't have any headrest, so I think that's what it was. Um, is it true that Jimmy, okay, isn't it usually some legal action taken by the people injured in the case like this? After the investigation, the coroner's jury listed the traffic death as an accident and ruled that there had been no criminal negligence. Oh, wow. So um, the person involved in the car accident couldn't even like sue uh, James Dean's estate if there was one. Is it possible Jimmy wanted to die? That's a hard one to answer. That's weird. Did Jimmy ha leave an estate? Yes, he left a $100,000 accidental death insurance policy from five to 10,000 cash in the, oh wait. So this is what Jimmy, this is what James Dean had let when he died. He left a $100,000 accidental death insurance policy and from five to $10,000 cash in his bank. His father was declared the closest relative and came into the money. So his dad ended up getting the money. Um, why didn't Jimmy live at home with his own parents? Well, we know that. Uh, please tell me how to get, <laughs> we would like to rename our amateur theatrical group after James Dean. Please tell me how to get permission. Probably the best course would be to write Warner Brothers, Burbank, California. There you go. Uh, please send me a picture of James Dean. <laughs> okay. What is this? I'm curious what this publication was. Um, uh, how come James Dean wasn't drafted? There's never been an official answer to this question. Certainly none of his studio, none, none from his studio. However, his eyesight, which was quite bad, may have been the cause. I wonder if he was wearing his glasses at the time when he was in his accent. Um, that's terrible. I wasn't, that wasn't a joke, but uh, do you ever do an act in Vegas? Oh, God. Uh, Nick Adams had a nightclub comedy act. With, what? Just before his death, he and Nick Adams had a nightclub comedy act, which was under consideration by four Las Vegas clubs. I have no idea. I'm I'm wondering how true this stuff is. <laughs> uh, why did oh here's why did Jimmy and Pierre Angeline break up? Well, the obvious reason is that Pierre, not willing to wait until Jimmy was ready for marriage, fell quickly and deeply in love with Vic Damone. There is a school of thought, however, that Miss, Miss oh wasn't too happy about the daughter's attachment to a non-Catholic. Okay, so there was a whole religious thing behind it. What plays did he appear in on Broadway? The Jaguar, blah, blah. Is there a fan club for Jimmy? Okay. One's registered with Movie Star Parade. Who stole Jimmy's bongo drums? What? Who stole Jimmy's bongo drums and recorder and why? Sorry, we don't have an answer to that one. This is the first time the incident's come to our attention. Apparently his bongo drugs, drums were stolen. Uh, what kind of girls did he like? Okay. if J I heard he also liked boys too. There was, a, there was something he said where... Um, why would he go through life with one arm tied behind his back? Um, uh, if James Dean wins the Academy Award in 57, okay, whatever, uh, is James is his father writing a book about him in order to cash in? Ouch. Is it true somebody in Hollywood is writing a book about Jimmy? Yes, director Nick Ray has been working on such a book and hopes to publish it next fall. Does Nick Ray have a book about that? Didn't it all go to his nephew? Uh, I don't know. I thought it, I, I, was, I didn't realize his dad got the money. I'm saying, I don't know how accurate this is. Um, but it's just, like I said, it's cool. That's from 1956. So we have some type of closeness as opposed to trying to read something now. Is it true that Jimmy was annoyed by fan mail? Jimmy was much too busy to personally answer the thousands of letters he received, but he was eternally grateful for a fan interest. One of his last acts was to order and personally pay for 10,000 photos to send to admirers. That'd be cool to have one of those. Uh, what was the name uh, of the background music in Rebel with the Cow? Okay. I want to read one more thing because the show's wrapping up. Here we go. Uh, this is basically, here, assembled with loving care, is the first complete and accurate fact sheet about Jimmy. Uh, real name, James Byron Dean. Birthplace, Green Gables Apartments, East 4th Street, Marion, Indiana. Birth date, February 8th, 1931. Uh, mother's name, Mildred Wilson. Father's name, Wilton Dean. His height and weight was 5'10", 155 pounds. I don't think I was ever 155 pounds. Hair blonde, eyes blue. Uh, no brothers and sisters, closest friends. I think I already went down that. Favorite writers. Interesting. He was a, wait, religion. He was a Quaker. Really? He was a Quaker. Uh, favorite foods, hot chocolate and rich desserts. Okay. Favorite clothes, casual, but contrary to opinion, 
He liked to dress up for special occasions. Aw. Um, uh, nickname, Rock. While filming Giant, his nickname was Rock. What? Why would his nickname be Rock? Is that to make fun of Rock Hudson? That's weird. Favorite colors, blue and red. Uh, fears, none. Except as a child, he was afraid a rooster would peck his hands. Okay. Cigarettes, no favorite. Constantly switched. <laughs> music, he liked Bach. African chants. 12th and 13th century music. Wow, Stravinsky. Liked all music, fast or slow. If it was good. <laughs> favorite aria what in the world reading matter devoured books of fiction philosophy aztec culture and the theater art and music <laughs> uh he played the bongo drums hobbies sports car racing yes he was a big racer collecting records photography carpentry cooking dancing singing body movement as a hobby sculpture and writing poetry body movement as a hobby um sports bullfighting bullfighting Horseback riding, sailing, fencing, gymnastics, boxing, tennis, and roping. Okay, I feel like some of these things were just thrown in there because of the movies he did. Uh, he went to Bra Brentwood Grade School in Los Angeles, Fairmount Grade School, Fairmount High School, both in Indiana, UCLA, and the Actors Studio in New York. Yeah, right. That's what Dahlia said. Dislikes. Victor Herbert. Okay. Oh, all romanticists. Okay. Formal parties. He hates formal parties, but he liked dressing up, uh, having his hair cut, and getting up early. His ambitions were to play Hamlet and to be a director. So that's it. Um, and, you know, it's just the whole thing's just really interesting about him and how things uh, with a lot of things. Like I said, I think death really creates a, a more of a celebrity. I love I love his films. Um, I really do, but um, I do think that that's really made him more famous than his uh, acting. Because, like I said, at that time, I, I really think Marlon Brando was the big one. You know, I think James Dean would have always just kind of followed Brando's coattails. Not to be mean, but I, I really feel that's the way it would have went. Uh, but thank you for. Coming on this journey of the recovering collector for 1956 and this James Dean album, uh, come back here on Wednesday for a Lego brick in the wall where I'm going to finish this Batmobile, the Lego Batmobile from 1989. I'm going to finish it. It will be done. Yes. And there'll be something new for the weekend after that, the Wednesday, the Wednesday after that. And then come back here on Friday for Just Draw the Damn Thing, uh, a fun game show where we get to draw and have bragging rights for who's master of the line. Uh, I am Michael Jason Francis, recovering collectors every Monday at 7.15. Uh, Dahlia Love, he seemed, he kind of seemed like a dick. There you go. James Dean, everybody. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, if you like watching any of these videos and you miss them live, go to you, go on to YouTube for New to a Robot and you can see all the episodes you have missed here from Recovering Collector, a Lego brick in the wall, and just draw the damn thing. I am Michael Jason Francis, and I will see you next time.